Hope y'all can see me. That's sun. It's just a, I think this angle's all right. As you roll in, let me know if you can see me just fine. Let me get y'all pulled up down here on my computer. On the pewter, so I don't work my eyes too much today. <laughs> Hope every ha everyone's having a lovely weekend. Let me know if you can hear me just fine as well, please. Once you come in. Yeah. We'll just wait here for a few moments. Um, just doing this live. I know spring is around the corner. That means both my lawn care and um, garden enthusiasts, y'all are ready to rock, right? So I know there's uh, plenty of questions that you guys have. So we're here to answer some of them today. Uh, we could talk about pre-emergence in the transition zone. Who's that? That was Mike. Oh, uh, what's going on, Mike? Loud and clear? Appreciate you, brother. Looks like a nice sunny day. It sure is, Al. I appreciate you stopping in, brother. Um, so we're just going to answer some lawn and uh, garden questions. If you guys have any, throw them at me. If you want to know about um, pre-emergent applications, I got gotcha. you. Um, if you want to know about anything like uh, taking care of those cool season weeds that still might be out there, we got some uh, options there as well. Hey, GG Naturals. How you doing, lady? Um, what else can we go over today? Oh, uh, a topic that Broke Farmer 76 was going over uh, the other night was uh, pest management, spring pest management for your garden. We can go over that as well. Y'all just throw me what you got and I'll try to help as much as possible. Peppers, what should I start? When should I start my seeds? Right now, Mike. Right now. Start your seeds. You're actually a little late, but it's fine. I promise you, you're fine. They'll pump out all the way up until your first frost. So what kind of peppers are you thinking about doing, Mike? Let me know. That's what I'm talking about, man. More, more lawn care enthusiasts growing stuff that they can eat. I love it. You guys don't, <laughs> it brings me joy to my heart to see lawn care people gardening and gardening people taking care of their lawn. You don't have to go crazy like I do, but you know, you feeding your lawn, especially if you're using your clippings into your, um, into your uh, compost pile. Like y'all see this compost pile back here that my uh, brother got going. We'll take a trip over there. I was turning the form. He's still at work. He was gonna be here with me. And if you didn't know, this is the uh, um, no dig um, raised beds that we did probably around August last year, something like that. And this is the same pile that he had started and we can take a peek at it and see how it looks. But we're supposed to be doing another bed today and we'll see if he's up to it when he gets home from work. So let me jump down here in the mic. Doing good, GG? That's good. Hey, Miss Craft, how you doing? Um, good afternoon. Found you through Lead Farmer 73 trying to figure out why my seeds are failing. Zen Grower 76, do me a favor. Tell me where what grow zone you're in and what seeds are you talking about failing? And uh, let's talk about it. Give me a little bit more information, okay? Uh, Bell and Hot, and Hot Peppers. Yeah, Mike, drop those seeds now. Um, there's some really interesting bell peppers out there. Do you have seeds already, Mike? Because if you don't, I got some interesting uh, cultivars or they're not really called. I got some interesting pepper seeds I could send you, bro. Just let me know if you want me to. Push it to the limit. Lawn pushers in the building. Hey, so if y'all were here and you saw that little travel power bank studio kit that I had and I showed you the last time I was live, I think, that's the guy who made it. That is a retired Air Force veteran. He is a um, uh, electrician, uh, aircraft electrician. That's what the job was when he was in. That, that dude, he knows his ways around some circuits. That's my guy though, Lawn Pusher, go check him out. Comical channel, He's so much, he has so much fun. If you're tired of seeing people take everything so serious, go check him out, he's gonna give you a good laugh. And if you have like moles and uh, <laughs> moles, voles, those type of problems, hit him up. Uh, he gets creative all the time and trying to figure out how to take care of them. Hey, New York, New York Gardener, good to be here. Uh, glad you're here. Um, Auntie's Garden, this question is about my lawn. Okay, I like it. I have bog patches throughout backyard and most weeds. Should I pull up weeds, then put on topsoil and new seeds? So if you have bald, bald spots in your backyard, Auntie's Garden, let me know which zone you're in. Are you, or you can let me know your garden zone. That would give me there as well. And then, um, then I can know what kind of grass type you're talking about getting down but as far as the weeds yes if you pick them up and pull them out do that uh i always will tell you go out there and pick your weeds if you can um and if you need to you can use chemical 
you know, appropriately, and then you can take care of that as well. Depending on what you use when it comes to the chemical, you may or may not be prone to put seed down, but you're in California zone 10B. So I'm gonna guess that you're dealing with some type of warm season lawn. Is it possible that you know what kind of warm season lawn you have? Because if it's something like Bermuda, I'm gonna be honest with you, you probably don't have to do anything, but kick up your mowing frequency. You kick up your mowing frequency, that, that Bermuda will spread out and it will fill in those holes. Now, if you're dealing with like uh, my man SoCal Lawn and Order, I'm not sure which garden zone he's in. I think he's in 9A, 9B. He's able to get away with fescue out there. And if you're dealing with fescue, yes, you're going to want to uh, seed some Augustine. So Augustine will spread as well. It doesn't spread as fast, but it will spread as well. So one thing that I'll tell you, uh, go look up this tool. It's called a Pro Plugger, right? Pro Plugger is about 20 or 30 bucks. Um, awesome tool. Uh, that's been tested in the Push It to the Limit labs as well. It's hardy, but what you can do is take plugs of your zoysia grass and then put them two or three plugs in the bare spots and guess what? They'll fill in. So you don't even need seed. You know, you can do the seed route, but that's a spreading type grass. It will spread off all on its own. So let me, I don't want to get too far behind. Let me come back up here. I hope that helps you, Auntie's Garden. Um, something to think about and you can also shoot me an email can I plant Kentucky blue you can plant Kentucky blue but here's the thing in your zone Kentucky bluegrass is gonna burn out in your heat it's just it's not gonna be able to take it Kentucky bluegrass is a cool season lawn so you really want to be as low as like Miss Craft at 7b zone 7b and above that's the furthest that's the furthest low on the map the lowest on the map that i would ever try to do a kentucky bluegrass and even at 7b i'd want that in a heavily shaded backyard just just think about that uh and and i want you to think about it like what you're thinking about doing is trying to grow uh, like collards you're trying to grow collard greens in the middle of your summer that just doesn't shake you're trying to grow a cool season crop vegetable in uh, warm season climate conditions. That's why you need to take a grass type that's favorable in those warm season conditions. I hope that probably hits the nail on the head for you. Hey baby, Super Saiyan. She said, hey, Robert Lee, gave me big old kiss. <laughs> um, let me see if I got too far behind. Oh, Mike, thank you, man, I appreciate that. Turf, is it true that pollinators can change spiciness of peppers in close proximity? So, funny that you asked that. Apparently, I didn't even know this, but yes, that is pretty easy to happen um, with pollinators, uh, either either pollinators crossing your pollination or keeping your pepper plants too close. You'll end up with a very spicy jalapeno sometimes. So it's possible, I've heard. Now, I didn't deal with that. Um, I had my habaneros right next to my jalapenos and you know, if my jalapenos were a little spicier than they were supposed to, I didn't mind and I didn't notice. So, but that's a really good question. Zone 6B, my tomato seedlings. Okay, also sunflower. When it's warmer, I'm going to be doing grass seed in the front and the back. Okay, so you're in zone 6B, which puts you in the transition zone or transition zone type climate. Um, so what I'm going to tell you is your tomato seedlings, they may be failing. Let me ask you this. Are they getting up? And then maybe are you dealing with some type of um, dampening off? Uh, tomatoes are usually pretty hardy. So um, that might be the issue. Are you doing this inside? Because if you're not inside, it's too cold for your tomatoes. That's why they're not making it. Just uh, keep that in mind for your tomatoes and for your sunflower. It's too cold for your sunflower as well. But if you're starting them inside, sunflowers are pretty hardy. So maybe you're watering too much is what I'm gonna guess. You're probably giving it too much water or not enough water. And it's pretty easy to, to tell the difference between those two situations. But uh, Zen Grower, let me know if you're starting those inside or outside, please. Um, Cali Zone 7B, I saw that. St. Augustine, saw that. Can I plant Kentucky Blue? We, we went over that. Happy Day. Long Creeps Limited. Mark, what's going on, brother? Hey, we're going to bring Mark back. Mark, you'd be proud of this compost pile back here. We're going to kick over there in a minute so I can show you guys what's going on. Um, what, what we got? Uh, Mark, uh, what's going on, brother? I'm over here grinding out at work, but I can hang a minute. I appreciate you. Naked Gardeners, hey, how you doing? I wish we could have could have St. Augustine grass. My neighbor had their house redone uh, and they redid their lawn with Augustine side and been cutting my grass very low and over so it would spread over to our lawn. Yes, she will creep over there, uh, especially if you have 
something that will give way to it. Now, if you have Bermuda, that's going to be a hard fight. But yeah, you can definitely do it. Your LT Turf episode was epic. It was. It was, Mark. That was a pretty cool LT Turf episode. Um, so the Reap, good morning. Hey, so the Reap, hey, how you doing? Pollinators are responsible for many component components of plant development. Facts. Um, thank you, Mike. You know I want them blazing hot anyway. I <laughs> just don't want my bell peppers hot. Right, so just put your bell peppers in a container that's away from them, or make sure you give it proper adequate space, and I think you'll be fine. Um, inside starts. Yeah, so Zen Grower, I'm going to bet that you have a lighting issue or a watering issue. That's that's one of your two issues. If you could take pictures of your setup and uh, send them my way, give me a little details in, in the email, uh, you can find that in my about section. I'll help you. I'm busy, but I'll help you as soon as I get some time. I usually can get to the emails faster than I can get to the comments, believe it or not. <laughs> you know I want them. Okay, we got that. Hey, Turf, I'm in 5B. And we have a patch in the front yard that won't grow grass. It's a pretty shaded area. So other than removing trees, what would you suggest? Thanks. So I would suggest you, one, I want you to do this. I want you to go out in your yard and um, get you some type of probe. This right here, this is a mysole probe. We're going to test my brother's um, garden beds. He, he struggled with a couple different vegetables i can't remember which one they were off the top of my head and i was like listen my soul just sent me a test kit and i'm coming your way for work let's go ahead and test your uh your raised garden beds and see what's going on in there so maybe he can amend them but i want you to go to that area and i want you to probe right i want you to see if you can get a get a screwdriver right and see if you can push a screwdriver in there and dig around because you might have a humongous rock down there or multiple rocks down there. So dig in that hole a little bit and make sure there's no big chunks of rocks in there because that might be your problem. You might just have a rocky area under there. Maybe something's buried down there that's really making it difficult for your grass seed to take hold. Other than that, get a very dense, uh, dense shade mix uh, type of seed. You're looking for things like uh, creeping, uh, not creeping, um, you're looking for things like, uh, hold on, just uh, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> what is it called? Uh, I'm struggling with words. Give me a moment. <laughs> it, fine fescues. You're looking for fine fescues or creeping fescues or red munching fescues. They, they're all very fine fescues. They don't like a lot of mowing. They grow relatively slow, but they do really well in heavy, dense shaded areas. That's the type of seed you're gonna look for to put in that area. Um, I am probably overwatering because my start cells look small to me. Yeah, so once you get the seed to germinate, stop watering from above. That's my number one tip for you. And then two, allow the top layer of your soil mix, right? Your seed starting mix, let it dry out. It's okay, because I promise you, the top little layer may dry out, but there's still moisture below. And then this is what I want you to do too. When you water it from below, right? The next time you water it from below and it sucks up all that moisture and you see that there's moisture there, every couple of days, go pick it up and feel the weight in it, right? Then put her down, go pick her up. I promise you're gonna know when you need to put more water in there. You'll still start, you'll start seeing your plants get a little, you know, loose, you know? And then, well, they'll start looking like they're, they're, they're thirsty for something, right? And, and then you'll fill your tray and it'll be super light. And then you just pour more water in there and then you'll be fine. So that type of, those type of tricks, paying attention to little things like how heavy your flat weighs, it goes a long way. So try those things out Zen Grower and, and double back and let me know how that works out for you. I want you to be successful just like me. So um, I'm probably, yeah, okay, boom. Thank you, Long Creeps Limited. Don't remove the tree mulch or plant shade loathing ground cover yeah i don't recommend moving the tree unless it's a danger to your home or something like that uh you know if they get too big and they're too close to the home or it's a type of tree that's prone to fall or fall over like those um bradford pear trees which is really funny because bradford pears were initially introduced um the sterile type that didn't spread wild but then they took it back and then re-released it and when they re-released it 
um, somehow pollen, the ones they were able to pollinate or reproduce got introduced and they became invasive and then they had a super weak root system, but we initially gravitated to them because they were um, easy to get established and they grew up fast and they gave you a nice little wood line as well, but that kind of backfired on us and now you got all the birds and the animals, creepy crawlies and critters, they're spreading the seeds all over the place and it's gotten out of control. So if it's a brad for pear, go ahead and take it down. That's when I, I'll say, go ahead and remove it. Don't remove the trees. The oxygen from the tree is more value, facts. <laughs> Unless it's a brad for pear, that's not worth your hassle. Take that out. As well as ecological services and habitat, yes. Uh, Marcus, I appreciate you being here. The, the best neighbor ever. Listen, uh, who was talking about it? Uh, Someone was talking, I was watching, uh, I don't know if it was a live, it was a replay of a live or a video, but this person was saying how neighboring, neighboring is a, like a dying art. Uh, good neighboring is a dying art. And I completely agree. Uh, back in the day, you know, we watched those movies back in the day in the 90s and in the early, in the early uh, turn of the century where everyone, these neighborhoods, or even in today's videos, I mean, in movies, you'll see that neighborhoods, they talk to each other. They know each other's names. They speak to each other. You ask for a cup of sugar. You let them borrow your uh, rake. You know, those type of things have, it's kind of a lost craft and trade. And if we're supposed to be neighbors to take care of each other in these communities, how are you going to do that if you don't know your neighbor? So I said all that to say, I appreciate my neighbor, Marcus. <laughs> um, GG, Erica Taylor. Hey, Erica Taylor. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Um, Andell, hey, how you doing? I think it was you. It was Andell. It was Andell's homestead. I was watching her video and she was talking about it. So y'all go check out Andell homestead. She's been on YouTube supporting everyone for a very long time. And now she has her own channel. So go check her out. And there she goes. That was me. Boom. <laughs> Veggie farm, a uh, whole new perspective. Hey, just joining. I'll have to see what I miss. You ain't mixed much. You right on time. Um, I wish I had those kind of neighbors, right? See, neighboring. So let me go, let me show you guys. Let's take a trip. Uh, let's see, let me show you something, right? So if you're trying to do your own, um, my brother, he's got some, before, let me knock on wood. He's got some really good Wi-Fi out here, so we should be good. But um, I wanna show you guys something. I was turning this pile for him, just trying to help him out because little brother had to go to work, unfortunately. Um, and he's not back yet. Now the, the camera's not really doing this justice, but this is super brown. We're getting there. This stuff is almost here. And to be honest, because it's unfinished, we're going to use this to fill the garden bed that we'll lay down either today or tomorrow, depending on how he feels when he gets home for work. But what I was doing was turning this bed and this stuff has been here since the first time you guys saw me here in August. And he's just been throwing all his waste from the garden eggs from the house you name it he throws it in here he keeps the grains out no raw meats or anything because we don't want to attract rodents and whatnot but it's this easy so now he has this is enough for a garden bed and although we made an initial purchase of some relatively good priced uh garden compost we still have all of this this static bed that he has out here so don't throw away your money all this good organic material is what he's made passively just being out here. Isn't that crazy, y'all? Let me uh, pull you. I'm going to show you what else he got growing on out here. My brother, he's doing his thing. Hey, what's up, Cam? How you doing, bro? All right, so I'm going to take my ugly mug off the screen for a little while. So he's got, uh, y'all remember that fig? The fig is, she's fine. We got a um, little bud. She's budding, coming out, right? She's about to wake up. Um, he's got leeks. Looks like he's planted some carrots. He's got seedlings coming up. Yeah. He's got these rows. Oh yeah. So there it is. Boom. He's got black nebula and then some other cosmic purple carrots over there. And I think this row right here is rutabagas. And then he's got a ton of leeks. This looks like, uh, these look like weeds. This looks like a spurge or something. I'm going to leave that alone. This ain't my guard. I ain't going to just run in here snatching stuff up. And then I can see some onions over there, more leeks. But he's doing good. And these are kind of remnants from what he started in the fall. And then he's got his peas already in the ground that have started to come up. That's cool, right? 
uh, I don't know what this is over here. I have to ask him when he gets home, but whatever it is, she's about to wake up because she's got buds all over. The loquat, uh, she's still doing good. She dropped off her leaves, <laughs> just like my parents at the house. She dropped all her leaves, but she's about to wake up as well. We got some budding actioning, action happening up there as well. Uh, I don't know what this is, um, but his blackberry over here is already back awake, doing good. He's got collars. A lot of this stuff is cleaned out because he's harvested it and he's prepping a whole bunch of starts inside, but he's got some leftover spinach or spinach he brought out here already. This is um, pretty, this is parsley. It looks like parsley. Maybe it might, let me see, let me just taste it. Yep, that's parsley. That's parsley flat. Man, that's good. Some chives in the back. These are Moore's head and collards. These are more peas. So my brother, he's getting smart. Look at him. He knows his sun pattern, right? Y'all see that big ball of sun? So what he's doing is he's creating shade for things that he's going to put here that's going to need shade with these peas he, that he's going to trellis up here. And I think he's going to bring in some plants and put them on the outside as well. So you got to get creative when you're in an open space like this. Um, he has his choice that went to seed that he's allowing them to go to seed so he can collect the seeds here soon. He's got some cabbage that he already got out that's doing really well more collards cam you love these collards. he's got collards for days collards here collards here i think that's a leak with another plant he slipped in there um this right here is interesting this is kohlrabi but this was a micro green kohlrabi and i told them to plant them out and see if they form a bulb this purple kohlrabi and it's actually forming a bulb so we'll see how big she gets and then what else does he have outside? More collars. You can see he's a collar fan. And then more cabbage he has planted out. So little brother, little brother's doing this thing. Y'all give little brother a round of applause. Gardener of the year in my book. Because I came down here, threw these beds in for him. And he was pretty much left to his own devices. Um, I'm too busy. He can't rely on me. So he had to do his own research. And uh, he's teaching me stuff now. So I think that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Finger snaps, that's right. Finger snaps for little brother. All right, so we're back. A lot of people are intimidated by starting compost and maintaining it. It is not as hard as we think, not as hard as at all. You know, he did that passively and he's still doing it passively. And look how much money he's about to save. So that's awesome. Um, I plan on extending my garden uh canadian proud get outdoors hey what's going on man i come check you out. i haven't stopped by your channel in a while i'm sorry uh my kale smell i need to make sure they didn't unsubscribe me because youtube's been acting funky lately i plan on extending my garden building long beds and plants to get a few more fru fruit trees for shade boom that's a smart move smart man uh, i like to get rid of my grass in between can i lay down heavy landscape scaping both uh, cloth and chips you Canadian, uh, you are in Canada, so I imagine that's a cool season lawn, and that'll probably get the job done. If and if you're not going to plant anything there, I say go ahead and hit it with some uh, a normal glyph glyphosate. If you if you're comfortable with that, spray it with some glyphosate, wait a week, and then cover it up, and then you'll know she'll never have a issue again. You you won't have any issues there. Um, my whole new perspective. Uh, Whole new, but if you just go the the um, the cloth and the chips route, you should be fine. Um, hello, Gigi. If it was Bermuda though, Bermuda, <laughs> she she she's she's a tough tough one. My kale, spinach, and broccoli are coming back from last year. Just ate some in my eggs. Yeah. So my kale, spinach. I, I went ahead and cut my spinach back. I'll talk to you about it once I get back home and make a video. I had to do a lot of stuff off camera because I just didn't have a lot of time to do it. I didn't have time to do a video. The wind was blowing 15 miles per hour, so the audio would have been choppy anyway. So uh, you got, you're just gonna have to forgive me on that one, but I'll bring you back up to speed. But I got about three, four plants out there that's been alive for a whole year now. <laughs> so, you know, what else we got? Hey, Sammy Joe, how you doing? Little brother doing great. Hand clap for the little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TT, I miss something? Oh, oh, okay. Hey, best yet, how you doing? <laughs> 
behind him. <laughs> yes, that's Malik's house. I will tell him he hello when he gets here. Um, Polo, my man Polo Fields. What's going on, Polo? How you doing? So we got any more questions, family? I'm here, you know. I'm here with you. Throw them at me. Lawn and garden questions. We're taking them all. Now, if you're uh, in the transition zone like me, um, you should be watching your soil temperatures very closely because if you are going to go the pre-emergent route, you're ready for your first split application probably in about a week or two. If you don't know, if you don't want to spend the time or you don't feel confident about going out there and just putting a regular thermometer in the ground and taking your readings, you can go over to greencastonline.com. Greencastonline.com. Dot com. And type in your zip code. I'm going to drop this in the chat for you real quick. Dot com. Uh, maybe I won't. Green cast soil temps. Let's do it that way. Boom. Here we go. Slide over to this website. This is a really powerful tool, okay? Just and even for germinating stuff, right? If you want to figure out when to uh, drop your seeds in the ground and it's based off soil temps, if you want to go off soil temps and not so much uh the calendar which soil temps is going to be more accurate the 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 season won't lie when it comes to the ground the ground temp that that is the most powerful tool that you can use i promise you and it's free um what we got y'all talking to each other what is the temps up there um in north carolina it's 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 a bit warmer it's about 10 it's about 10 degrees warmer on average What's up, Turf and everyone? Glad I caught you live. Hey, John Welsh, I'm glad you're here. Appreciate it. What is your take on creating mini greenhouse with using a shed? Uh, there's a guy, he lives around here, Eli. I don't have a lot of experience with it. Guy's name is Eli. I'm gonna defer to him and we're gonna have to wait on that. But I, seen, I saw him do it um, when I first came out here. Uh, it was late in the evening. COVID, as we know, was running rampant. Um, and it still is, but I just, I, you know, I didn't feel comfortable doing it then. I will come back and we will readdress that with Eli. He's an amazing gardener, um, horticulturist. He has all types of stuff in the zone that he's not even supposed to have. And as part of that reason for that is his shed greenhouse. But I think, of course, some things, some things, I'll give you my take on it. Some things for me, I'm just going to buy because if you don't have all the tools that you need. I think little brother is home. Is that him? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah, that's him. Little brother is home. So, um, I something. So for a greenhouse, I'm probably just gonna buy a greenhouse unless I have the tools and the materials readily available. And you gotta remember, I'm not a carpenter by trade. I've had to build a few things, but that's not my thing. And some things, I'm just gonna go ahead and spend a little money on. Um, that's what I would prefer. So, you know, I say if you can do it and you got the tools, go for it. But some things we're just spending a couple coins on. My opinion. Just my opinion. Don't beat me up. Turf. I'm in Northeast North Carolina, Zone 7A. Okay. Uh, my granddaddy's azaleas has a white fungus. How can I help that? I'm not, uh, I, I don't know. But it sounds like I would start off with water, drenching it with water. And then since it's still very cool, neem oil would probably work. Uh, I'm just gonna guess on that. Neem oil would probably work. I, I haven't dealt with, I have azaleas too in my zone. I got the uh, Encore azaleas, right? So with me having the Encore azaleas, I haven't experienced any powdery mildew or white fungus on my azaleas. But the safest, most horticultural, uh, organic, uh, option would be neem oil neem oil will probably get you done yeah i'm live what's up the people said hurry up they got questions for you <laughs> they, got, they got questions for you oh uh, what's this turf okay all right i hope that helps and they'll and you know what i'll double back i'm gonna do a little bit of research I, i'll email I'll, hit, I'll text some people up at the extension office to see what they got for me Turf question. I have a lawn service. How do I transition over to doing it myself without chemicals? Um, so Yankee sister, your lawn service 
has been using chemicals. I'm going to let you know that right now. They use any chemical under the moon. And I, 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 I want you guys to be comfortable and, and feel knowledgeable enough to know the difference between this is a chemical because this thing is highly synthesized and it and it is linked with causing cancer or something like that, right? When we're talking about our sides, the, the killer sides and the pesticides, not that you should be afraid to use those either, responsible use. I tell you what, when you have a garden, it will automatically make you more responsible applicating on, on your lawn because you always got to think, I don't want to affect anything that's going that I'm going to be ingesting. So, but there are natural fertilizers out there. You can, um, Milo has lost its natural um, organic label or organic claim for other reasons, which are silly, but you can go with things like Milo. Pretty much anything that's a slow release fertilizer, um, except the ones that are urea coated, uh, urea coated that, that's a synthetically bonded prill that's going to make it release slow. Um, you get the stuff that smells like success, as my man Alan Hayne would say. Um, Malorganot, a lot of the sunny land blends that I have coming on my hands is technically not organic, but that's because it goes through a process like humic and fulvic. The way that they process their humic and fulvic, it, it's a process that happens, which means it's no longer technically organic. Now that reads as chemical, but as when we when we're using our heads and we're properly educated, you should know that this is relatively safe. Does that make sense? But the, the best way to get over to, uh, the best, the first step to taking care of your lawn would be getting a copy of your soil test if they did one. That way you don't have to waste your own money doing it. Um, but if, if they didn't, this is a good option. I did a video before our first mow. Go check out that video when we get done here. And I go over some things that I did, just some go-to things to keep in mind before you pull the trigger on your lawn care this season. Now this test, this test is a great test for a beginner. It doesn't give you everything. It's not my favorite test in the world, but it'll definitely get you going better than anything that you can buy out of a big box store. And what that's going to let you know is what you are um, deficient in on your lawn when it comes to your macro and micronutrients. I really wish they could show me my CEC on this. Um, if they could show me my CEC on this, this would move up on the list and the CEC is so important. You go check out my man Cam. He just did a video with Mark Lawn Creeps Limited. Uh, he did, a, I think, a one part, two part. I think the first part is out. He kind of dives into it. And I think he's going to circle back. He's in here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Cam. But the CEC lets you know your soil profile. We're going to just dumb it down like that. I got the link in the bio if you want to check this out. But yeah, you can get it off Amazon, I believe. Um, but CECs is going to let you know I have a sandy, loamy type of uh, soil or versus I have a hard clay type of soil, right? And the difference in that means your hard clay is packed with nutrients most likely, but they need help releasing. Um, they need help releasing those nutrients and they can hold on to things when you feed them. So you can do slower feeds. You can do long extended releases really well with the heavy clay like soil when you get your CEC. And then when you have a sandy, more sandy based soil like my brother has out here, a lot of those nutrients will wash out. So you got to kind of think, well, I might want to hit it with little small doses a little bit more frequently because that's going to be a healthier way of feeding that lawn. It's no different from, think of it this way. I have a relatively above average, um, above average uh, metabolism, right? So my slightly above average metabolism would be somewhere between a beautiful blend of a sandy and clay soil, right? Now there's people who can eat whatever they want and they never get fat. That's your sandy soil types, right? There's people who eat, look at a Twinkie and gain 30 pounds. That's your clay, okay? Now that's not completely 100% scientifically um, accurate, but I hope it puts your mind in the right headspace when you're thinking about feeding your lawn and even inside your garden as well. So I hope that helps. Um, hope all is well with you and talking to you. Good afternoon. Hey, Chris, I, I believe I spoke to you already. Oh, my screen just jumped. Let me go back. Man, uh, where, where was I? Where was I? Let me let me find my spot. Sorry. Uh, I think this is where I was. Time is money. Nope. Nope. Oh, I'm behind, y'all. What is your take on... Oh, no. We were there. 
let me refine my place. Time is money. Yes, time is money. Okay, thank you for the information about Azalea. If I skipped you, I'm sorry. Uh, part of my yard stays soggy and grows algae moss. Is there anything I can do to change it? Um, you need to increase. Uh, well, there's a few different things you can do. You can use moss out. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, <laughs> I've heard you heard. I'm sure you heard that before. The moss out will take care of that uh, as well. But as far as increasing your drainage in that area and getting something planted in it, whether it be food or turf, will help with that sogginess. So increasing the drainage in your area, you have um, things that help the ground perk out there. Like there is, um, what is it called? Soil loosener by Liquid Lawn Solutions. They will help, I mean, simple lawn solutions. They will help your ground perk. They will help that water filtrate through there. Um, you can also top dress with different things that will allow increase the porosity of your soil so it will drain. Um, those are the things that you're looking for. But as far as getting rid of the algae and moss, that's an easy fix. Um, and I'm, if correct me if I'm wrong, if someone knows better than me in the chat, I'm pretty sure the algae moss, that's a pH issue anyway, or lack of like calcium or something like that. So look at the moss out. Look at what the ingredients are and you'll you'll know whatever that is, that's what you're missing because that's just like a quick fix for it. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, that homeschool life, how you doing? Hey, if you got kids and um, oh, copper, copper sprays work well on fungus. Yes, you're right, Miss Craft, because you weren't talking about mold, you were talking about fungus. So copper side, there's an Omri organic blend that you could use that could help you with your fungus issue, and uh, thank you, Miss Craft. I appreciate you. It was teamwork, teamwork. Um, but if you're homeschooling this year and you're brand new homeschooling, and a lot of parents are, go check out that homeschool life. She has some helpful tips that help you keep your sanity while you have become a brand new homeschooler. Wooden supplies have gotten so expensive. Yes, I just bought a greenhouse and will put it up myself. Exactly. That's another thing too. Your materials, the, the cost of your materials increasing. Uh, in case I missed your reply, what are you using for weed and feed grass turf? Um, I don't use a weed and feed. I do selective applications based off the scenario. Weed and feeds, you are applying the weed and feed, the, 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 the sides, the things that are killing these different uh, um, weeds in your lawn. You're applying that throughout your whole lawn. And I don't, um, I don't do that anymore because my lawn's not in such a state to where I have weeds throughout the entirety of it. I have some little things that creeped in through the winter, but they're gonna be easy to just pull out or hit it with a little bit of some type of side in my um, garage and it'll be fine. But uh, if you do wanna use a weed and feed, uh, Sunnyland should be in the stores near you out there, GG. They have a really good weed and feed product and you can go over to Bermuda Grass Central. I think he has plenty of videos showing you how to properly use that product. But keep in mind, that is definitely, when we're talking about chemical, when I think of chemical, I think of sides, herbicides, pesticides, killicides. Those are the sides that give me red signals and flares. When it comes to the fertilizer, we are getting our lawn to a place to where it can rely and take care of it on, on its own long term. So to me, I have a little bit more wiggle room to play with. I will confidently use grass clippings from a synthetic fertilizer before I use grass clippings. I will never use grass clippings if I have sprayed any type of sides on it within probably the past six months, regardless of what the label says. That's just me. I hope that helps. Um, we jumped. So when are you going to pull that mower out, Turf? I'm about a week away. Grass is almost six inches all over, uh, seven inches all over. Uh, my mower is probably, so I'm not going to be back home for a few weeks. Um, so I'll probably be a week or two behind the curve and I'm going to show you how to catch up my way. Um, so I probably won't be pulling it out until April, bro. <laughs> April. <laughs> um, GG, okay, as long as you're okay. Hugs and kisses. Uh, did you get the soil test off Amazon? Nope, didn't. Uh, links in the bio. You can also go on Yard Mastery. I got a Yard Mastery link and they have a soil test kit. It looks like this because it's the exact same kit, it's just different branding. You can use theirs as well. And that link's in the bio as well, um, in the description of the video. 
Uh, what kind of greens? Uh, talking. Thank you. Hugs back to you, Sammy Drew. I can't put this shovel away. I'm waiting for spring. It's been a slow winter. LOL. <laughs> I love to get the lawnmower out. Me too, Canadian. Me too. Team Clay here, they see. <laughs> hey, Liddy. It's just a small round top, like a high tunnel. Okay, you're telling me about your your uh, your greenhouse that you got. Nice. Um, decent analogy. Now I want a Twinkie, though. <laughs> I'm glad you approve of my haphazardly thrown together analogy there, Mark. I know you were cringing on a little bit of it, but you get what I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying to reach as many minds and people as possible. <laughs> like Alan Haynes said, I play the gray area so I can touch as many people. I think that's a lot more productive for everyone. <laughs> um, what we got here? Thank you, Turf. I will do my research. No problem. Yankee system, no problem. If you get, if you hit a wall on your research, just email me. I promise you. Ask the people. To anyone who's emailed me, they've heard back from me. <laughs> Hello, Turf. Is that your yard, your house? Just tuned in. Shirley Weems, no, this is not my yard or my house. This is my little brother's yard and house. Um, this is the raised garden beds that we were here for last year that him and I threw in within one day. We had uh, three yards or a bucket or whatever they called it of compost dumped off, some garden compost dumped off. We filled up the beds with it. He never removed his frames. Uh, I don't think he plans on removing his frames, but he never removed his frames. Um, but his his plans did well. Y'all saw it. You, you just see what I sold you and you saw the update that I gave you. He's doing just fine. Hey man, I appreciate that, Chris. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. I appreciate that. You say thank you for your willingness to share your information. Hey, look, as much as y'all think that I'm helping you, I promise you, you're helping me more. <laughs> I promise you, you are. Oh my man, the lawn shark is in mine. Uh, gotcha. I appreciate it, Turf. No, no problem. Hey, Turf, mommy time. How you doing? <laughs> Cam, there you are. Man, I've been confusing you with Polo this whole daggone time. What's, on Cam? What's up, Cam? Uh, Mark, good job, Rob. Thank you, Mark. It means a lot to, to have Mark sign off on anything I say when it comes to being better uh, citizens to our planet. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'll look into it. Love, okay, Love Notes helping people in the greenhouse. Thank you, Love Notes. Um, Greenhouse Megastore Online, that's where you got it from. Okay. Dino Rules, boom. Yeah, Cam, cool. So, questions. I caught up. I got to the bottom of the chat. Any more questions? Let's talk about pest control this spring. Uh, we got to come up with a nickname for Cam for his smoothness. I know, right? I think I was, what did I say? Cam reminded me, he's like a, he's like a, I, it'll come to me here in a minute. Chris White, hello, Turf, North Carolina here watching. I'm in, North, I'm in your, I'm in your state, Chris White. I'm here, I'm here doing turf therapy things. I can't be in my garden, so I'm in my little brother's garden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So pest management, right? So when we're talking about um, pest management for the spring, uh, we can start with inner pest management. Um, and that, that starts off with using things like garlic, right? A lot of things don't like garlic. So off things like Japanese beetles, and other pests that don't like the pheromones and the scents that garlic gives off. You can use that. Now, when you're talking about battling those flying insects and uh, aphids, so the two that come to mind are those dreaded white moths, white moths with your um, cabbage loopers, right? They, they put those cabbage worms, loopers out there. I really didn't deal with a lot of like um, tomato horn worms or anything like that. I think that my hummingbird feeders is the reason why I had a colony of hummingbirds flying around. And because I had that colony of hummingbirds flying around, I think the birds took care of all of my big worms. You know, the big, big caterpillar issues that will come through and devastate your tomato plant. But, oh, okay, mommy time. I tried the Amarone. It was very good. Yes. Yeah. So that batch that I made, imagine that. And I know you paid about 60 $50 for that bottle, and I made it at home for $90. The well, $90 six gallon batch gave me 30 bottles. See what I'm saying? Like, wine is the cheapest game to get into if you're interested in picking up a new hobby. Um, but the cabbage loopers. So, for cabbage loopers, I'm gonna tell you what worked for me. I started out being able to just use um, staying on top of them with some neem oil and water, right? And then 
it, they just, I think I had to go somewhere. I came back and they were dominating my garden. So I had to pull out some big guns and I switched over to BT. Now BT is nice. I really like BT. It works quick. It, it does them in really quick and it's organic. So um, it's just a bacteria strain that completely melts the intestines of alkaline stomach uh, insects, right? So our stomachs are not alkaline. You know, we have an acidic stomach. So if it's an alkaline stomach, this bacteria does them in. So that's why I use BT. So using water first, then stepping up to neem oil, or um, you can use an orange oil, um, like uh, Aunt Linda makes. You can even try, I think uh, Lady Cheryl, she does like this. Um, oil neem oil or maybe it's a mineral oil mix with like pepper flakes and some other stuff you can go check out she has like a whole playlist on it for natural pest uh pest sprays that she can put on it you can go that route as well um and i used the orange oil that i made and that worked as well but that bt is stopping stop them in his tracks that's the easy if you just want an easy go to hit button bt will stop cabbage loopers in their steps now aphids Aphids are a little trickier. Now, one of the things that draw aphids as well is going to be too much nitrogen. So careful with how much nitrogen you're using. But with the aphids, staying on top of them, the best ways is first plant things that are going to encourage um, their natural predators to come in. So we're talking about ladybugs, right? Um, they will straight up devastate a uh, aphid colony if their presence is large enough. If you don't believe me, go over to Guten Yardening. Guten Yardening, he had an outbreak of aphids in his indoor garden, and he shows you step by step how he took care of them. One of the things that he did was he neem oiled everything, then he hit it with DE, and one of the things about DE is they have a DE duster that I recommend that you get because it gets it, it's a lot easier to apply diatomaceous earth with that duster um, just and it lets you just put it on the plant because diatomaceous earth can affect everything it will kill any soft body insects so it doesn't discriminate it goes after anything well it doesn't go after it but it has an effect on all those things but when you get that duster you can more make more accurate applications to the area of concern and then you rinse it off when all of uh when the fallout, when the battlefield clears out, you rinse them off and you'll be good to go. Um, and then ladybugs, and, and it completely wiped it all out. He, he ordered some ladybugs. He, he told you where he got them from and it was a beautiful batch of ladybugs and they got to work and they cleaned everything up within a week and then they laid eggs. So they ate all the stuff and then laid a whole bunch of eggs and then he even has a short where he you captures the larva stages of the ladybug, which was really cool. So check that stuff out, people. Check that stuff out. Had to run outside and look at the box. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, love notes in there helping people as usual. Um, I'm Marone. I'm going to try and attract more birds in my garden. Do it, Miss Craft. I'm telling you, like hummingbird feeders. I, I don't. I don't think I saw a. I didn't see a tomato hornworm at all last year. And the only thing that I can give it credit to is, cause I know they're in my area. I've seen other gardeners struggle with them in my area. I've heard people at the extension office struggling with them in my area. But you guys saw those really cool pictures I was able to snap of my hummingbirds. There's a family of them, which is why I already got the hummingbird feeder out. They migrate. So if they're not already back, they'll be back soon. And as soon as they come back, they're gonna make a stop by my house. And I wanted some food to be out there ready for them so they didn't have to wait. So, you know, uh, what part of Maryland am I in? I'm in the uh, Aberdeen County, you know, Harford County, Harford County, Aberdeen area. That's where I'm at in Maryland. Uh, I really enjoy learning from this live. Eco, my man, appreciate you here. <laughs> uh, Pitts, Pitts, Tina, Tina, hey, I don't know if that's Pitts or Tina. I saw you talking that trash, Mr. P. You're not ready, Mr. P. You're not ready. Y'all saw my um my collard green video when I made some collars and I was taking jabs at Mr. P. Y'all tell Mr. P he's not ready. Just tell him he's not ready. Go ahead and throw in the towel, brother. <laughs> Blended dreams. Hey, how you doing? Does neem oil kill gnats because they are running my house? Okay. They won't kill the gnats, but they will make it. So this is what you need to do with the gnats. First thing I want you to do is stop watering from the top. Okay, if you're doing that, stop watering from the top. 
figure out some type of wicking system to where you can water from below and up. The reason why is because gnats, like um, our grubs, they like the top layer of that soil. It said, LOL, did he respond? <laughs> I didn't um, I didn't respond to the comments yet. I, I, you know, I've been traveling, packing, getting ready to travel, moving. I'm going to get to them, though. I'll probably get to them tonight. I'll get on the computer and run through all of them. But the fungus gnats, they like for the topsoil to stay moist. So if you're keeping your top layer of soil moist, whether it be a house plants or seedlings that you're starting, you're actually saying, fungus gnats, come here and lay eggs. So that's why you need to let that dry out. And one of the ways of letting it dry out would be... Um, from watering below, right? Another thing that I want you to do is go to Home Depot and get the, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this specific because it's the cheapest one I know. You can buy them off Amazon's, but at Home Depot, they got the black cat bug zapper thing. And I give you brand and all. It's only like 22, 24 bucks. Go buy that thing, hang it up in your greenhouse or your garden area and leave it on 24 seven. That is going to thin out your fungus gnat population. Now, we got through the, the, the um, those are cultural practices that's automatically gonna thin out your fungus gnat problem. Now, when you wanna use the neem oil to help you with that, you're going to spray the neem oil on the top layer of that soil. The same way that you would miss keep the top layer of the soil nice and moist when you're trying to start your seedlings, that's how you want to apply your neem oil. And what that does is it makes it it, they don't want to bump and grind. They don't want to lay any eggs in that. It's nasty. That's like being in a dirty house or some dirty sheets. They don't, they, you know, you will suffocate their eggs that are in there and they're not going to want to reproduce in those conditions. So that's how you would use the neem oil. So it will kill the larva because it would smother them, the oxygen deprivation, they're not going to hatch out, but it's not necessarily going to kill the flying stage of the fungus gnat. Which you, how you kill the flying stage of your fungus is that is you plug a bug zapper. That stuff is messy and they're expensive. Get you a bug zapper, hang it 24 seven. And at nighttime, make sure all of the lights in that area is out. Your bug zapper should not have to compete with any other source of light. So that's important as well. All right, I hope that helps you. <laughs> Long answer, but I hope that helps you. All right. Should I think about up potting my collars and peppers or just wait another three weeks till I can put them in the ground? The collars are starting to get kind of big in the starter tray. Well, well, Cam, I hope you dropped new collar seeds anyway. It's about time for us to do that in our zone anyway, because yours were kind of leggy. But yes, you can go ahead and take your collars out of your little cells and up pot them into like little solo cups, like the peekaboo cup. And you should be able to leave it in that peekaboo cup until it's ready to go outside right? Don't do anything bigger than that. So yes, you can individually separate your, because I've seen your seedlings, separate them, up pot them into a solo cup and bury them a little deep, okay? And you should be fine. Um, as far as the peppers, the peppers, they're not outgrowing that space. So you need to thin out your peppers, leave them in there for another week or so, and then up pot them because they're moving slow. Those roots are moving slow. I promise you. You got a lot of, you got the top growth, let them focus on that bottom growth. That's what they're doing when they're not looking like they're doing a lot of movement up top. That's because they're putting all their energy down below. So be patient with your peppers, but the collars, you can go for it. Yeah. I got to do some family stuff. Much love, Canadian Proud Get Outdoors. Everyone stay safe. Hey, go do that. Family comes first. Go do that. Thank you for stopping in. Gooden had them in a grow tent. They couldn't fly away. Well, the ladybugs, yes. But also, if they, if they have food... They're not going to go, like, they're not, yeah, you might lose. He he, he ordered a, quite a bit of them, but if they have a food source, they're not going to immediately leave. That's what some people make mistakes doing. His infestation was so heavy that them ladybugs was like, they did a scout, they looked around, and they were like, oh, okay, there's plenty of food here, and then they went to work. So if you're buying it and then and dumping them off, then and there's no aphids for them to eat, they're going to fly away and go find them something to eat. What is the extension office for? Life crazy booms. The extension office, let me see how short I can make this. The extension office purposes, purpose is to do a lot of research on the back end through the state university or however it's funded, right? And this extension of your state university usually. They get the research in your local area, your local microclimate, your zone, your county, 
and then they take that information and put it in an easy to digest way for the average homeowner and farmer to understand. That is the purpose of the extension office is to help you be a better grower and a better person to our eco environment. That is the purpose of the extension office and it's free. You already paid for it. You paid taxes. If you paid taxes, you paid for it. Go get your money worth. You know, don't let that money go to waste. Um, hope that answered your question. Life crazy blooms. Uh, my flowers attracted praying mantis and ladybugs to fight bugs. Yeah, my I had praying mantis. Y'all saw them. Y'all remember turf? <laughs> With turf, the mascot. When I had my nephew and cousin at the house, <laughs> nephew and brother-in-law at the house, turf. Turf came in. I didn't. I I didn't put any. Um, I didn't put any um, praying mantis eggs out there. They all showed up on their own. So yeah, extension office is amazing, but they're not equal, which is why I went live. The last time I went live and I gave you a whole bunch of other resources that you can use if your extension office is trash because you know, it happens. Last year, I thought the DE for my pool filter was the same as the food grade DE. No, yeah, no, that is not the same. Do not make that mistake. And when you buy diatomaceous earth, if you do it, get the smallest bag that you can find. I'm talking about like a four pound bag if you can find it a little goes a long way. If you buy one of them big 20 pound bags, you will have that bag for your entire life. What's up, Led? How you going, man? At work, gripping the grain, but I'm glad I caught you. I'm glad you're here too, Led. So that, yeah, DE, that, that's a good. Stinky Puddle Ranch, did I miss something? You said at turf? Put it again if I missed it. I'm sorry, Stinky Puddle Ranch. Thank you for being here, by the way. Um, LOL, did he respond? Yeah, no, we hit that. <laughs> Turf, I need help with those dandelions and dollar weeds. Um, the dandelions and the dollar weeds. So the dandelions, 2,4-D. 2,4-D is what you're looking for. Look for a three-way applicator. Hopefully it's nowhere near your garden bed. If it is, um, just be careful when you're applying it. Read the label, follow the instructions, you'll be fine. But dandelion, um, or you can hand pull it out. The only trick with dandelion, as you know, is you got to make sure you get the tap root or it's going to come right back. But dandelion and dollar weed is pretty easy to get rid of. Look for a three-way blend, 2,4-D, quinclorac, um, and I can't think of the other, uh, the other um, chemical that's in that product. Cam, Polo, help me out if you're in the building still. Um, happy Saturday. Okay, hold up. I checked out the lawn loosener. I'm getting that for sure. Didn't know that that existed. Yes, Chris. So Simple Lawn Solutions, if you hit my link down there, go check it out. They'll hook you up. I'm telling you. Got good stuff. Uh, I checked out. Okay. Happy Saturday. Great live this afternoon. We are currently listening to you from the greenhouse. Sowing seeds and repotting plants. That's what I'm talking about. Stinky Puddle Ranch. Y'all go check out Stinky Puddle Ranch. Hey, love knows. What do you fertilize with once you get your tree leaves? So I think you're asking about fertilizing trees in, in a container, possibly. And you're saying once the leaves have come on. Oh, true leaves. That's what you're saying. What do I fertilize with when you're starting seedlings? What are you fertilizing with when you get your true leaves? That's a great question. I like this product called Espoma. Espoma Indoor Plant Fertilizer. I'm pretty sure it's organic. I, can, I can't find it in the big box stores anymore. All I see is a whole bunch of miracle Grow. I don't recommend that, that you will you will mess around and burn up your plants. I almost went, I almost went explicit just now because it's real. It will happen that fast. Espoma, go on Amazon, check it out. There might be a link below. And if you go to my turf therapy approved lawn and garden stuff, you hit that link, you go to the garden section. I'm pretty sure I got Espoma linked in there. Uh, that's my tried and true for plant, for indoor stuff. Now, if you're in a pinch, use uh, the Neptune's fish fertilizer, blue label, because it's not gonna smell as bad as 511. You use 511, everybody in that house is gonna be mad at you. I did that before. The whole house smelled like a wet wolf. I don't know what a wet wolf smells like, but I guarantee you that's what it probably smells like. It was terrible. Don't ever do that. Happy, so, okay, so let's check. My make wine out of those deadly lines, Eco. Boom, there you go, <laughs> Miss Crab. <laughs> Those dandelions are baby bee food, make jam, jelly, and tea for them. Yep, you can pull the dandelions up and eat it. I'm literally growing dandelions. I'm gonna grow dandelions, I'm a lawn care dude, and I'm gonna grow dandelions for medicinal and tea purposes. So, yeah. Beauty in the garden, hey girl, how you doing? I know your garden over there looking amazing. I, you got about two, three videos that I need to catch up on. 
Uh, whenever you guys see me commenting on your videos and it's like 10 minutes go by, comment, that means I'm catching up. I'm binging your channel and I'm catching up and I'll just put it on the TV and hit it, add Q, add Q, sit back and I give you an hour of my day. That's how I do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, love those dandelions. Hey, BB. I like that. Hey, BB. <laughs> Uh, best description. I, I assume you talk about the extension office description. Um, with it, please check out your local extension. They have classes on chickens, bees, cannon. They sure do. Whole new perspective. Yep, they sure do. I did drop my second round of seeds last week. That's good, Cam. You're doing good, Cam. I'm going to show y'all Cam's garden. I went and I saw Cam last weekend. Um, social distancing, masked on the whole time. I hope the audio comes all, out all right. He's going to do his version of it. I'm going to do my version of it. And I think I'm going to call my, like, uh, a, a gardener is born or something like that. That might be the title of my video because Cam, he inspired me. He, in, he thinks that I inspired him, but really he's inspiring me to continue going and doing what I'm doing because I can see how it's affecting people in their lives. So that was an amazing thing to be able to go out there and see him with his stars going, actually sacrificing a piece of his beautiful backyard to grow food to feed his family. So that's amazing. If you have not already subscribed to Elevated Lawnscapes, go over there, subscribe to him. The garden content is coming. And you might learn a little something about this lawn care game too. A lot of nerds, I have heard yet, I have heard yet, a lot of garden nerds and wonderful people. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I keep frozen up because I'm at work. What did I miss? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they have to fly a bit to get rid of the winter fat they have in hibernation. They tell you to release them in the evening. His had grow light, so it was a controlled environment. Raj, I think you're still talking about garden you, guten yarning. Um, hello, lead. Dandelions are looking for calcium. You most likely have a calcium deficiency. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, guten is growing so much food in small spaces. He really is. Y'all need to check out guten yarn. And I brought him, I think he was the first gardener I brought on the channel for an interview. Dicamba, that's what it is, Mark. Mark, so 2,4-D, you looking for stuff with 2,4-D, um, Quinclorac, dicamba, that'll get you rolling for sure for your dandelion and dollar weed that'll, that'll snipe them. Thanks, Mark. And Mark don't even fool with the chemicals anymore, but you, you, you got to stay. I mean, just because you don't use it don't mean you don't need to be educated about it. So, hey, yeah, sorry, true leaf. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I got you, Life Crazy Blooms. Yes, yeah, so espoma is good. Yeah, I like espoma. Espoma tried and true. Wet wolf, I'm telling you, that's what it smelled like, beauty. It smelled like wet wolf. It was terrible. Has anyone used 511 that has seafood allergies? That's a good question, but I'm gonna tell you this. I don't see it affecting you if you have a seafood allergy because by the time, that when you eat the plant, the plant has turned those nutrients into a completely different structure. You're not eating seafood anymore. Now I'll tell you if you're using 511 and you do a harvest, you probably want to make sure you rinse them off really well because maybe the, the fish fertilizer that, you know, that dead fish that's all chunked up in there, maybe that could have an adverse effect to you, but that's a really good question. I'm sure if you ask Google though, she'll tell you. I guarantee you, <laughs> she'll tell you. But as far as the plant itself, no, nah, you're good. So Fentrazone, Dicamba, yeah, I keep saying, so Fentrazone, the two way, the three way is 2,4-D Dicamba, so Fentrazone, not Quinclorac, but Quinclorac is good. If you find Quinclorac in there, that's a good one because it also takes care of your crabgrass. So that's why I like that. I keep saying those because I'm a fan of them. So French zone, be careful with that. It, it's super hot. You, you can burn some stuff up with it. Has anyone, um, I've been trying to get dandelions for two years. I've only saw two in the sanded area, sandy area. Just get some seeds and grow them. Get some seeds and grow them. Cause that, that's what I'm doing. I bought, I got some really cool dandelions that I'm growing. So I'm excited about it. They're gonna go in the medicinal herb garden boxes. They are selling dandelions in the produce Asian markets. Boom. Cam is the homie. Yes, he is. And Cam, that, that the Cam, uh, when I was talking about the CEC earlier, that's who's going to be doing it. Um, Cam over at uh, Elevated Lawnscapes. He'll be doing it with Mark Lawn Creeps Limited, who's actually in the building. Hello, the artistic kitchen with Sandy Self. Hello, everyone. Hello to you, too. Um... Love notes, what do you think about grow bags for fruit trees? That's a good question. Um, 
I have not, the only fruit tree I have in the grow bag is my Meyer lemon. My Meyer lemon is in a five gallon grow bag and I was contemplating whether or not I should put it back in a clay pot. Um, I haven't made up my mind. I think it's fine. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not messing with her no more. She's still holding on to that fruit and that fruit still gets bigger. So I think that's cool. Please repeat the garden channel to view elevated, nah, it's elevated lawn, uh, uh, Cam, Say something if you're still here. <laughs> Elevated lawnscapes. He's he's up there in blue. If you scroll up, let me uh I'll pin him up right here. Boom. So I just pinned him to the chat. That's 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 his channel name. Go over there and check him out. Um sorry, grow bags. I've seen people grow fig. Sorry, grow bags. I've seen people grow fig trees in bags. Yeah, so there you go. I guess you can. Beauty in the Garden. Hold on, wait. I missed something. Let me go back up. Uh, today I received a carrot harvest from August. I almost cried. I gave up on it. I received a carrot harvest from almost cried. I gave up on it. Are you saying that you had success, Quincy? Why'd you cry? You cried out of tears of joy? You know? Yeah, those carrots, they'll hang in there. You, mine, remember when I pulled mine up? I told you guys, you did not have to pull them up. The only reason why I was pulling mine up was because my carrots were in containers. And a month or so before that, it got so cold that things froze and I was trying to harvest like my rutabagas and I had to dig my, my rutabagas and radishes. I had to break the soil up, like break the whole block up and then break them apart. I didn't want to deal with that anymore. And I wanted to eat the carrots then. And another cool thing about the carrots is they're very easy to store long term. Like you can just put them in your fridge. You don't have to do anything fancy, but put them in the crisper and they'll be good for a month down there. Especially if you just pull them out your, um, they're probably even longer. If you just pull them out your garden, rinse them off, throw them in your, well, rinse them off, let them dry, throw them in your fridge, you'll be fine. They'll hold, they'll hold their own for a while. So, but yeah, they, they'll, they'll overwinter really well. Um, bat guano, blood meal, cotton seed meal, alfalfa meal. These are all good organic fertilizers for nitrogen needs. Yes. And making your own like uh, worm cast tea. You guys have I've seen that. I don't know where you're going to get your hands on bat guano at, other than the store. Uh, blood meal. You can get blood meal in the store. You, you probably have to go to like your agricultural store or specialty store to follow, find bat guano. I haven't really dealt with bat, bat guano, nor do I intend to. Um, blood meal is simple enough for me. I'm good. <laughs> alfalfa meal, y'all know that um, Love Notes, she just did a video on alfalfa meal. Apparently that stuff smells like success for real. So, <laughs> so yeah, just keep that in mind. And Dale Homestead and Connie, your knowledge does affect others' turf. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that, and Dale. Uh, looking for a platform for container plants in the yard. Thinking about pallets. Any cheap ideas? You just said it. Pallets. Pallets. Um, go see if you can go to a construction site. Maybe they're getting rid of some bricks, you know, or just wood. Let me ask you this. Better question. Why are you trying to keep them off the ground? What's wrong with them being on the ground? Just put them on the ground. Or are you trying to raise them up so you don't have to bend over as much or something? But um, yeah, as you can see, my brother, he's got all his containers right there on the ground. They're all on the ground. He got them on both sides, on the ground. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. uh, Boom. Looking for, yeah, grow bags get blown over in the winds. Yes, that is true. Um, especially on the side of my house. It depends on the plant you have on it, in it, how, how tall that plant is. Um, but that's true. If they cut the, if they catch wind, it's a tall, it's a tall plant they will fall over. My tomato, I think one or two of my tomatoes did that, but that's when you got to think about the placement in your garden. Use that suncalc.net um, website that I gave you guys. That's handy to figure out your placement for the sun, but also keep in mind how that wind comes through. Because uh, like last year, I almost lost that really tall mammoth sunflower. Uh, I had three of them. I harvested one of the heads. The seeds were actually pretty good. Um, and I still have two heads with the seeds on it that I need to harvest. I just got them hanging up upside down in my garage and they're perfectly fine. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, Elevated Lawn is the channel. Thanks to anyone that does come by the channel. I'm listening while putting together my new spreader. Boom. Oh, he's got, he breaking out that spiker. I'm gonna come steal that spreader. Don't leave it outside, bro. I'm taking it. <laughs> I have horrible luck with horrible luck with root crops, but I'm pulling them up today. Pitts, you most likely have a phosphorus deficiency. If you aren't getting any roots 
off of any of your root crops, please do a soil test. Because I, I, I'm willing to bet your problem is a phosphorus deficiency or you're planting them too close. And I'm pretty sure I've seen you try to harvest and plant them out and your spacing isn't necessarily the issue. I think you have a phosphorus deficiency. I really do. And if you have a phosphorus deficiency, easy fix is going to be bone meal or using a fertilizer that has a higher middle number than the first number. So NPK, that's the number. It's like 511. 511, that's 5% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, 1% potassium. So you're going to want to find something like the Neptune's fish fertilizer, that's a 246, I believe. So that's 2% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, 6% potassium. So you're going to look for something with the middle number to be higher than the first number if you're struggling that hard with the phosphorus plants. Because once they get their foliage on, you don't want to push a lot of energy into really big green tops. We want the root. So you need more phosphorus. More phosphorus in your life. Bone meal, slow release fertilizer. You can scrape that in on the top uh, layers of the soil or mix it in the potting mix that you're doing. Or, and then you can come back with the liquid, feeder, uh, liquid food fertilizer like the Neptune's Blue Label. I like that stuff. Like I said, I think it's, I think it's a label is like a 246 or something like that. I'm pretty sure the middle number is a four and it, it'll get you going. I have horrible, thank you guys. I was just thinking about putting my fruit trees in the grow bag, but I don't own any grow bags. So thank you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see if you do that. You're going to be addicted to that spreader cam. <laughs> oh, Quincy, appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You didn't have to do it, but I appreciate you. Trying to help keep the rabbits out of the containers. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, rabbit stew. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. So, um, pallets. Um, construction sites, there's always construction going on. Just drive by the construction site, see what's out there, you know. Find the person who looked like they in charge, ask them about the stuff that's laying out. Um, milk crates, um, grocery stores, they throw the milk crates in the back all the time. You can use those. Um, yeah, bricks, pallets, milk crates. Those are the things that pop in my head. Help her out in the chat, y'all. What are y'all using at home to elevate your stuff that is either free or cheap? You know, free or cheap. Help our fellow gardener out. Help Edgy Farm. Give her some ideas. All right, Mark. Thanks for popping in, bro. Appreciate the time that you spent with me. Uh, do you have a hydropon hydroponic video for beginners? I don't have the video, but I did it with Miss Craft. Um, and it's on Miss Craft's channel. I think Cracky Method Hydroponics is the easiest, the cheapest, the cheapest, easiest, and probably the 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 most rewarding, I think, um, because you don't have to do a lot. You kind of just like fire and forget, and then it does its, it does its own thing. So, um, but you can go over to Miss Crab. I'll put together my own version of a short little video down the line. Uh, it's not really in the program right now. I'll tell you what, you will definitely see one in July because it's too hot for me to grow lettuce in July. So you'll see me doing it around June probably late May, early June, I'll do another video on Cracky Hydroponics because I'm not going to even try to deal with the aphids. That hot outside, they will demolish the lettuce. Even if I put it in the backyards, I don't want to deal with it. So that's when you'll see me do my uh, Cracky method. But in the meantime, you can go over to like Growing With Jeff. He does a lot with Cracky, small channel and you know, good, good stuff. Um, and then Miss Craft. Miss Craft does hydroponics out the wazoo. Go, she got playlists and she showed me. She showed me how to do wine and then she showed me how to do hydroponics. Thank you very much, Miss Craft. I appreciate you and your time. So go check those two channels out until I get my video up. But those are some people that actually have some experience with it. Um, thanks. Okay, so I will not work. So it will not work for me. I was looking for a cheaper way to plant my fruit tree and grow back. So I will just grow them the way I always plant them. There you go. Go with tried and true beauty in the garden. Tried and true. Uh, what is the name of your channel? I wish Love Notes had a channel. That's what we got to do. We got to challenge Miss Love Notes. That Miss Love Notes got so much information in her head, people, and, and got so many things growing. I, I would love to see her start a channel. I really would. Thank you. Definitely need easy hydroponics. Center blocks. Yeah, so cinder blocks. That's another good one that you can use to elevate those things in your area. Um, thanks for the ideas. You're welcome, Veggie Farm. 
Finally seeing flowers on my tomato plants. Yeah, give it up for Miss Crab. She had to switch out some lights because hers were in like a little sprout and pout stage, but it, it definitely catch, caught back up. That's good. G by McDonald's on Burger King and oh, drive by, go by McDonald's or Burger King and ask the manager for the five gallon pickle buckets with lids. They will save you some in our food grade. They usually throw them away. Thanks for the plug, Christy. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Y'all better go over there and get your free containers, your free five gallon pickle buckets. You can also use those buckets for making wine. So I, you know, I had to go buy McDonald's the other day while I was traveling. That was probably the first time I was in McDonald's in years. So, but, but now I'm gonna be making it a habit to swing by and <laughs> give me some free containers. Um, no problem. Okay. Hey, BB, where can I find the extension office resource list? Mine is, till, mine is still text close till until spring summer so they should have a website hey bb where are you at what what um if you don't mind telling me what state are you in um and they should still have a website so you know you get you go to their website and you should be fine uh <laughs> nuggets and buckets <laughs> you still still be fine but my mine is the hartford county extension office and they have plenty of you know, they're, they're not the extension office. The physical office isn't open, but you can still email them, call them, send them pictures. And they have a website full of resources. So, you know, that could that could work. Um, I have nothing on the YouTube. Yeah, we know. Love knows. Love knows needs to start a channel. Tell Love knows to start dropping some content. Um, <laughs> school nutrition managers will also give you crates for free. Boom. Call the school nutrition managers at your local schools and they may provide them for free. Christy Lewis is there. Yeah, round of applause for Christy Lewis with the two very, very helpful plugs right there. I appreciate it. Ellen Panky. Hey, yeah, look at Aunt Ellen in the Aunt Ellen in the house. Hello, all. Just stopping <coughs> in. I appreciate you for stopping me. Can you send me the picture of the fertilizer so I can go pick it up now? Which one, Life Crazy Blues? Blooms. Um, I can. I I'll send you a link to it when I get done with this. But which one? Tell me which one you're talking about. Uh, thank you, Love Notes. But I know your garden is beautiful, right? <laughs> we know her garden beautiful. Uh, Chris White, hey, how you doing? Coleman's Corner, hey, how you doing? Thank you for being here. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, but that's uh, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to hop on here, show y'all my my uh, my brother's lovely garden. He's doing great out here. He's got a lot of starts going on inside. Um, and uh, answer any lawn and garden questions if you had it. So um, I've had y'all's time for we're, we're, we're at an hour. Yeah, about an hour. Yeah. So I don't want to take your beautiful Saturday. So I'll hang around a little bit longer. Seed addicts. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for being here. And if there's any last minute um, lawn or garden questions, I'll let them drop in the chat and then we'll get over. Then I'm going to uh, help my brother finish turning this pile back here. Turning this pile. You can see the color. You can see the color a lot better now. Oh, let me boom. All right. So you see how that's super brown? That thing's about to be black. It's about to be black in a couple more months. And then we got that lighter brown there. That's about to be some black gold in a couple more months. John Welsh, my yard is trash right now. <laughs> now I've been renovating my house. Now I'm getting ready to do the landscaping. Uh, Yankee sister is still colder than a witch's oven. <laughs> 6B, yeah, it's cold. It's and it's cold. It's cold. It's gonna be cold this weekend for us. Up, well, back home where my garden is, it's gonna be really cold. Have you planted kohlrabi? Yes. Oh, you don't know? We do kohlrabi. My brother, I showed you kohlrabi earlier in the video, but um, so I had kohlrabi in one of my uh, um, hoop houses that I did. It looks like a cattle cart. My my buddy Kenny Cooper, he'd make fun of me saying that it looks like I got a bandwagon on the back of my, on my front patio. But um, I grew kohlrabi all through the winter. As far as its taste, I'm gonna tell you this, it is much better in the fall than in the summer. In the fall, that thing is sweet. It's sweet as all get out. And literally I can, I wanted to eat it raw, but I didn't, we made it with greens. We usually put our kohlrabi with greens, we stir fry them with the greens or I cook them down with my collards and they take on the flavor of greens and collards really well. So the taste is very neutral. 
um, and sweet. So it's very neutral, kind of turnipy in the spring, but on the fall, that thing, you can make ice cream out of it. Like I've seen people, Guten Yardening, he makes kohlrabi ice cream. And I was like, really, kohlrabi ice cream? I wonder how that would taste. And then in the fall, when I tried the um, kohlrabi, I was like, this is, it's so much sweeter. You know how we were talking about the sugars. Uh, Aunt Linda, she did a video explaining to you the breakdown on the sugars. I had Q, Farmer Q was in the building that night that I was live and he told you the sucrose, frucrose, he gave you all the technical terms to it. But uh, yeah, he makes kohlrabi into ice cream. So that gives you an idea of how sweet that stuff is. It actually reminds me of, if you're a fan of this pistachio, you know the pistachio um, gelato that you can get that's sweet, but it's not um, super sweet. Like it's just sweet enough. Like you can't eat too much of it and get to, you know, it's not over sweet. That's the kind of similar profile that I think that kohlrabi ice cream would have. So yeah, kohlrabi, that's my jam. If you couldn't tell, <laughs> and I got that from Lady Linda, purple kohlrabi is the one I've grown the most, um, but you'll see different varieties this year. I have a question. My yard is sandy. When it rains, it tends to be muddy. We tried to grow grass in the past. It only grows in certain areas. So that you didn't give me a question, but I'm, I'm guessing you're asking um, what, what can you do to help this out? You're going to want to introduce more organic matter in that area. So if you need to introduce some like good uh, quality compost into that area, um, you're going to want to change the profile of that soil a little bit so it can um, put, you said it's sandy, but it's muddy. So um, maybe it's just sandy on the top. Um, but what zone are you in? What zone are you in? And tell me what zone you're in because see like Bermuda will do really well in that type of scenario, especially if it's sandy on the top, which means the surface of the soil is gonna be warm, which Bermuda likes, any warm season grass would like that. But if it's sandy and you're in a cooler climate, then some grasses like Kentucky bluegrass or fescue may struggle on the top of, uh, on getting taken off. But a grass like perennial rye or bent grass, the grasses that you'll see on the golf courses, they will thrive in a, an environment like that. So give me a little bit more information if you don't mind, Coleman's Corner. I need two loads, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Hello, growing with Donnie. Sorry, just got here. How do you prepare it? Toya Stoy, uh, I think I answered that answer now. You can do whatever you want with it. It's great raw. The kohlrabi is great raw. You can saute it, cook it real quick, or you can let it boil down with some greens. I, I, maybe I'm gonna even grill it this year. Let's do that. Let's grill some kohlrabi and see what that tastes like. Give that a shot. Um, oh, whole new perspective. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. So good raw. See, Beauty in the Garden, she agrees. That kohlrabi is good raw. Turf has been growing different kinds of kohlrabi. Yep, nailed it. I know we have to be the most patient while we listen to the Southern gardeners, right? Because <laughs> the Southern gardeners, they already doing their thing. <laughs> Thanks everyone. I dropped seeds about a few weeks ago for kohlrabi. You gonna love it. You gonna love it, Toy Story. You gonna love it. Uh, Stinky Puddle Ranch, we are learning so much from you just by listening in the background. Greenhouse bounced. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your knowledge and energy. You, sir, I appreciate, I appreciate you. Y'all hear my brother over there messing with power tools? I don't know what he's doing. <sighs> Bless his soul. Okay, kohlrabi Kar slaw is great also. You just gave me an idea. Ellen, you just blew my mind. How about we do this? How about we take the kohlrabi, we chop it up like we're going to make a slaw, but then we take, it another, we take it another step and we pickle it. Let's pickle it. Let's pickle some kohlrabi and can that joker up because I'm growing enough to do it. Thank you, Ellen. You just gave me an idea. I love it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make some kohlrabi pickled. It's going to be like that, like uh, that uh, pickled relish slaw stuff that you, I'm going to make that. I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a recipe in the ball canning guide that I can tweak a little bit and make it my way. So I'm doing that. They make ice cream with purple sweet potatoes also. I believe that, I mean, sweet potatoes. I have purple sweet potato ice cream on the big island. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, grilled, I know, right? Let's try grilled, y'all. Ooh, excuse me. In the summer, it's dusty, 
but when it rains, we have clay under the sand, so it gets muddy. Should I try to keep growing grass or just cover the yard with wood chips? Slaw sounds good. So Coleman's Corner, you're saying in the summer it's dusty, but when it rains, you have clay underneath the sand. Um, what, what area are you in? Uh, what, what's your zone? What's your state and zone, please? Um, but what you're explaining to me kind of makes sense to why it's muddy. You, it looks a little sandy on top, but it's muddy. So it's probably not sand. It's probably just gr dried up clay. And you're struggling with growing things in there. What have you tried to grow? I still need to know where you're at so I can tell you if you're, if you're growing the right or wrong seed. So tell me what state you're in, right? And or your zone. And then we can finish dialing this thing in for you, Coleman's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to help you as much as I can. I'm putting it together in my head your scenario, but I got to get an idea of what's going on. Slaw sounds good. Uh, they have stores now. They sell purple sweet potato ice cream. What? Get out of here. I didn't know that. Ferment that karabi. Yeah. Don't make me buy that copper pot. <laughs> what? Love notes. Oh, wow. Like sauerkraut karabi. Right. See? And sweet karabi slaw and grilled sausage. Hey, I'm hungry now, too. See, she blew my mind with that. Yes, kosa, uh, slaw karabis. Oh, man, oh, we doing it. We doing it. Y'all might see me in the, in the kitchen a little bit more this season. I had fun doing it, and it turned out how I wanted it to. I, that's not the first time I recorded stuff in the kitchen, but that was the first time it turned out the way I wanted it to, so I went ahead and released it. Um, I love to cook. I'm always looking for different takes on preparing food. I have a bread pudding now in the oven with peaches added. Ooh, that sounds good. Hey, apartment gardener. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you teasing now. I know, right? She's teasing. <laughs> I have a recipe for turnip wine. What about kohlrabi wine? Look, I don't think I'm growing enough kohlrabi for wine. So maybe when we get to the partial homestead in, in about four years, maybe sooner. Who knows? <laughs> Um, but that sounds good. Maybe Miss Craft would grow enough karabi over there for some wine. Um, that sounds so good. I know, doesn't it? Coleman's Corner, add tons of mulch, compost, build the foundation, rest will follow. That's correct. So that's where I'm about to lead you into. We're going to increase the humidification process of that clay. We want to get that clay to release and break down. But there's some grass types that will still thrive in that clay. I just need to know your grow zone. Uh, Florida. Oh, okay. Florida zone 9A. So listen, you probably already have St. Augustine or um, Bermuda. So I'm gonna recommend you the same thing that I told someone earlier. I want you to go on Amazon and I want you, it, actually if you chart out, go through my um, my turf therapy approved gear for Amazon, it's in that, it's in one of those categories in there, but it's called a pro plugger. Get a pro plugger, take plugs from areas where grass is growing and put them in that area and then do the next step as well. We want to introduce more organic material into there. So you can go the compost right, route, that's fine. Another good option, which you'll see this product, you've seen me use this product, is uh, from Soil uh, Simple Lawn Solutions, and it's called Soil Hume. And in the Soil Hume, you got um, hu uh, humic, fulvic, and seaweed. That's going to increase the microbial activity and, and, and encourage the humification process to train to change that soil texture and that profile over time. That's another product that you can use or you can just use compost like he said. The problem with using certain types of compost, if you're going to use a compost, if you have like leaf grow, like that really fine, well um, mesh, you know, it's nice and it's been filtered out really well. You don't want a whole bunch of sticks and stems and all types of chunks in that area. So you're going to want something that's been broken down really nice or some mushroom compost. You know, you could use that as well. Just a just enough to coat about a quarter inch and you can do that multiple times throughout the year. That will also increase that humification process. Uh, what else we got? In Florida, they have used black cow to amend the sandy soil. Yep, boom, there you go. <laughs> black cow work as well. Um, black cow tends to be a lot chunkier to me, um, so it, it might not spread as well. At least the batches that I've seen that's been developing nowadays. I think Farmer Q was talking about how, you know, he kind of feels like some of these batches are questionable because they're pumping it out so fast. So, yeah, just just... Be careful and do your do your research. Just don't take my word for it. Go and verify. Sometimes I misspeak. Sometimes I'll answer a garden question, 
thinking that you're talking about the lawn, vice versa. And sometimes I just flat out just get it wrong, you know? So always double check. I appreciate you trusting me, but double check and make sure that, okay, Turf said this, do a quick Google. Oh yeah, that lines up, cool, I'm gonna do it. Just do that. Um, thank you for your help with the lights. You're very welcome, apartment gardener. You're very welcome. My brother, he's got those same lights. So if you got them, you'll be good to go. I think I saw your email too. So I'm glad you got them. And uh, well, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you his setup. I'm gonna record a video while I'm here because we're gonna pull this soil sample uh, before I leave. I'm gonna show you how I do that. And we're gonna figure out what's going on inside of his uh, garden beds. Uh, Malik, if you're still listening, I know you walking around, but what, what wasn't doing well in your garden bed back here? I don't remember what he told me it was, but uh, we're going to figure it out. Soil, soil. Uh, this corner in Florida, you should go with some Bermuda grass. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Planting to grow enough for tomato wine. Whew. Planting to grow enough for tomato wine. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. A beef farmer just gave me some T-bone steaks an inch thick. He had he had inch and a half. I'm going to do them with peaches and Hennessy. Ooh, that sounds good. I'll try kohlrabi raw first, then in greens and slaw. Is it sweet pickling or dill? Is it a, is it a sweet pickling or dill? When I do it, I'm probably going to do a sweet pickling. I'm not going to do a dill. Um, nah, I don't want that dill flavor in there. I'll do a sweet pickling. Miss Kraft, I have to get my recipe cards back out. You sure do, Miss Ellen. Uh, sounds yummy, love notes. Stop it, love notes. <laughs> yeah, she done made everyone hungry. Yeah, grass fed. Look at you. Still talking. I'm taking note. That we're talking about. 9A, I am from Tampa Bay area. Horse manure breaks down easy, not in garden area. Okay, cool. Yeah, so 9A, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay area. Um, let me go back and refresh myself with uh oh i think you're just you're, you must be talking to someone else because i think i answered your question from earlier chris yeah 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 i'm good you just you just chatting with someone else coleman coleman's corner said thank you everyone i really appreciate it you're welcome we're here to help each other yeah bermuda knows all about that stuff yeah bermuda yeah your bermuda will easily spread but you you take that pro plugger and you put it in those areas and give it a little bit of um give it a little bit of loving they should take off and spread just fine hey container crops i saw you was live man every time you go live i'm always doing something i can't come and watch it cook i'm sorry uh i'm gonna catch you next time though know that i was there in spirit <laughs> uh yeah we got you know we love good food <laughs> Okay, I had the website up. It was recently updated and it says to email. I just had a hundred questions. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you know, just do a couple related. When you type up your emails to those people, make sure that your questions are in the same category. That helps them speed up with the return answers. And also, feel free to email me. I'll get to them when I can. Don't, don't be mad at me if they take a little longer. You know, but I get to them and I'll help you as much as I can, especially when I'm not live because I can do a little bit of research, ask a few master gardeners that are tried and true and have been doing it for a while and aren't just throwing the title around because they think it means something other than just helping people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll reach out to my resources and see how much I can help you. Yeah. Neighbors looking after neighbors in here. That's right, Ann. That's right. We all neighbors taking care of each other. That was a beautiful message. Y'all need to go check out that video from Ann Dell. She's prepping for the hurricane season. We not even, most people aren't even thinking that far out. Like you just want to get to spring. And Ann Dell is over here talking about hurricane season. Yeah, it's probably going to be a bad one. And before you know it, it's going to be hurricane season. You got to run, Chris White. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. So it's gonna be hurricane season. So she's thinking about it. She's like looking at what she has and she's like, you know, I realize I don't have as much food as I thought I had, you know? And, oh, you know, I'm new to gardening, um, but I don't wanna just rely on my skills for gardening because I'm a brand new gardener. So I gotta figure some stuff out. So she's planning ahead for what she knows is to come. And even if this year turns out to not be a heavy, bad, a bad hurricane season, she will be ready for years to come. Go check it out. And she's talking about neighbors helping neighbors, lost art. You ain't gotta 
be in your neighbor's house and yard and in their face every day, but do you know your neighbor's name? Even if you don't like them, do you know their name? Do you know their name to where, like, if something's happening to you, you can at least say, Jim, help me. You know, so Jim knows you're talking to him? Or would you just be out there yelling? Can't call on anyone's name. These things are important. It's just as important to your survival out there. So, you know, speak. Don't just walk by. Speak to your neighbors. You ain't got to be friends with them and invite them into your home. Just speak to them. Um, that's right. And I hate my whole name have to get my channel going so I can change it. <laughs> Ellen, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, we get ready for hurricane season in April here in South Mississippi. In April, going to be here before you know it. Hey, Toy Story. Appreciate you. Thank you. Malik, what were you struggling with out here in your garden? What, what vegetables were you struggling with? I was talking about nothing? Nah, you lied. Something was... <laughs> a couple things struggled. That's why we're doing the soil test. Was it the collards in the beginning or something? I don't know. He having amnesia right now. The turnips. So his turnips were struggling. So he was having issues with a couple root vegetables. So, you know, we're going to test it out. See what, see what it's working with. Mississippi is getting hit with a lot of stuff. Their water system floods, et cetera. We're going to pip, we got to prepare for emergencies. Of course. Yes. This is ain't no scare tactics type things. You know, um, ain't no need to be afraid people. Cause, uh, it, that don't help you being scared. It's good to be scared. Cause you know, you're alive, but, uh, it, it does, you no know, good to just be scared sitting there and being scared and staying scared. Um, it takes action. You got to act. Use that fear to move you to get stuff done. Being scared gets nothing done. So you got to get out there and do something so you don't have to be afraid anymore. You know, you can be worried and concerned, but you don't have to be scared anymore. Scared means you're alive, but you need to do something with that now. Once, once you're like, okay, I'm scared. Now what? Now what? Take the next step. Take the next step. I'm already canning food for the hurricane season. You want it. You want it. Who is that? Uh, Drainzer Beast? Drainzer Beast? I think I got that right. Drainzer Beast. Yeah. Um, hello, I remember my mom had St. Augustine grass. I was a member of the family. It was a member of the family. <laughs> Walk on it at your wrist. <laughs> it was beautiful with southern women's borders, lilies, hydrangeas, crepe myrtles. That sounds beautiful. You know, the only issue I have with St. Augustine grass is the way it feels. It's a little rough on the feet. That's my only, it looks beautiful, but it's a little rough on the feet. So if I'm gonna go with any warm season grass, if I can pick my perfect warm season grass, for me, my lifestyle and what I'm looking for, it's gonna be zoysia. It's gonna be zoysia all day, through and through. Zoysia, because it feels like cool season grass. It, it spreads like warm season grass. It moves slower, which is a benefit to me not having to mow like crazy in the peak of its uh, season. So, I like it. I like it. Low maintenance, and it gets so thick. Once it gets so thick and established, weeds have to work 10 times harder to establish in your lawn. So, if I had to pick a perfect grass for me being in the South, it's gonna be zoysia. The next best would probably be, I'd probably go zoysia, Bermuda, then St. Augustine, just because of how it feels on the feet. Bermuda, number two, because of the maintenance when you keep it at a certain length. Um, it's, it's just, it's more work, you know, it's more work. But I gotta keep in mind, maintaining a lawn and a garden, I need, I wanna have both. So I need the proper grass type that's gonna allow me to have both because if I have to choose, to be honest, at this point in my life, in my, in, in my head space, I'll let that lawn go because the lawn, you can't, the lawn's not gonna feed you. I love to do it. It brings me peace and joy and happiness when I pull up to my house, but it doesn't feed me. So if I had to choose, the lawn is the first thing that's gonna go. So I'm gonna make sure that I put a grass type in it that's gonna be conducive to my lifestyle. So that's why I would pick zoysia. I'm scaredy cat gardener, but just the bugs and creatures. Well, you gotta learn to love them too, because they there to help you in the garden. <laughs> Container crops. <laughs> I'm doing the Lead Farmer 73's pep prepper party. Yeah, so you know, if you wanna get some good prepping advice and tips, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be in there because I'm at the brother's house. Uh, we might throw it on if we're not doing anything and come in there and help you out. My brother, his truck is right here. I know 
I know he got stuff in the back of his truck. He don't even maneuver with it that often lately, but I know he's got rope back there. I know he's got enough to get him, get him home. And, uh, you know, that you're going to get some good advice over there. And if I'm in there, I'll help out and give you as much advice as possible, but be prepared, stay ready. That way we don't have to get ready. Um, survival preparedness yes i grew up with the grass and barefoot felt good exactly i'm sitting here looking at snow banks and i'm grateful that i have all of you to keep me happy until spring i'm in zone five in canada sammy joe i didn't know you were in canada my goodness i love truly love every one of you we love you too sammy we really do um, we are able to continue to eat from my bucket and crates garden after tornadoes and flood hitting because I was able to move them into safe areas. Christy, that's a great idea. See, you're not just getting information from me here, people. You get them from the chat, you get them from the family, you get them from the neighbors. Maybe we'll just start calling them neighbors. Hey, neighbor. Thanks to Ann Dale. I love them. I just run from them. Okay. The wife. This guy. This guy. That's him telling me he's about ready to put these uh, garden beds in. I'm about to lose. Hey! Hey! Can I get can I get five more minutes, please? I know this is your house and everything. Dang! Yeah, man, that's loud. <laughs> Give me five more minutes and we can get working. <laughs> Oh, you done? <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> we were able to continue to eat. Yeah, okay. I got that one. Uh, I love them. Sammy Joe piled up. That's true. The lawn doesn't feed you. Right. I'm about to lose plenty of pounds running from these bugs. <laughs> so I'm bribing. I'm, bribing, I'm bribing them with a nice flower selection. <laughs> you sound like my wife. She's grown to love them, but kind of you know still don't love them i mean y'all see lady Liz, she don't really care for bugs either but she get out there and deal with it i'm going to get some zoysia even though i got all kinds of other stuff growing in this crazy mix of grasses and weeds that zoysia is the truth yes i'm getting rid of them rid of the little bit of grass i have in the backyard hey you know to each his own that grass comes in handy when you feed it properly you know you can use it right there in your compost piles and it looks good it feeds the souls it feeds the soul you know so for me if grass is in your thing get rid of it uh, you're not hurting my feelings i promise you yes i'm planning to put beds where my grass burnt last year perfect can't eat grass there you go <laughs> i think part of prepping should include self-defense my son teaches uh caporia i think that's how you say that pt at ucla yes yeah, self-defense is very important um but some people some people are good at self-defense. Some people are good mental defense. So figure out what you're good at. Team up with the neighbor who's better at the other thing than you. You know, sometimes you got to combine forces. You can't do it all on your own. I think part of my... Pro oh, no, I got that one. That's why I love my containers. Yeah, yeah, moving them around. That would be an honor, neighbors. Yes, love, love neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. Yes. <laughs> love notes, you always bring a smile to my heart. I know, love notes is always so helpful. I totally agree. The yard should be beautiful, productive, and indulgently enjoyable. I like that. Um, first time watching your channel. Welcome, Maria Graham. I heard about your videos. Well, welcome to the family. Hey, welcome, neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. <laughs> uh, little brothers, right? I know he's back there spinning that saw. He look, he's getting the, he he's getting the. We about to put in another garden bag, so he's getting the area ready. Y'all remember how we did it? He's just laying out the cardboard. That's still from the same batch that we got. So he's laying out the cardboard, and uh, we about to box this thing up. And um, y'all saw the compost. It's doing good. So. <sighs> I have a large front yard of grass, so the backyard will be a garden. Nice, see? And I plan to do something very similar when I get to where I want to be, Blended Dreams. Front yard, that's going to be the lawn, playground area. Backyard, that's where we're eating. To be honest, because to be honest, I want, I don't necessarily want everybody to know what I'm growing all the time. In a certain situation, I might want my stuff to be in the backyard, you know, <laughs> so I can have better eyes on it. You got to go through my front yard to get to my backyard, hopefully. So, you know, I'm with you on that, Blended Dreams. 
I grow all kind. Yep, sweet potatoes used to go crazy. He has all the Lead Farmer 73 tools though, expert level. Yes, there we go. <laughs> we too, we do too. We got all them tools over here. <laughs> um, yeah, Yankee Sense the spring is coming. Is a coming, is a coming. Let me say that the right way. Spring is a coming, is facts. Message from Greenhouse. Please, if you have not already, hit that thumbs up for your neighbor at Turf Therapy. I appreciate you, Stinky Puddle, stinky puddle Ranch. <laughs> uh, Blended Dreams. Uh, my neighbors took out their above ground pool and now water sits in the spot for weeks. Shaking my head. They don't get eaten up by mosquitoes. They don't get eaten up by mosquitoes. I even asked to help make a rain garden. They look at me like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Terrible. That's how I feel about my yard. Hey, you know, Krista Lewis, my fruit trees were in the containers. When strong winds came, I just picked them back up. Yep, yeah, so when strong winds came, I got like this wind tunnel that comes through on the side of my house, which made it really difficult for me to do peas because it was knocking down my peas. But at the same time, it's really good for my tomatoes to be over there because of all the air circulation and flow, uh, you know, the making sure that your plants have room to breathe and good airflow coming through there is important to their health. So you kind of got to just work with your scenario as much as you can. You got the wood. All right. I got all the hints and signs that it's time for me to earn my pay while I'm staying at the, 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 the young little brother's house. Dolores and Tony, I got something for y'all. It's coming. Wife throwing it in the mail here soon. Look out for a package from your brother from another mo mother out there in C-H-U-L-A-H-O-M-A, <laughs> Chula Homa Gardens. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna get out of here, y'all. I'm gonna help the brother get this garden bed in. Um, I'm gonna do some soil samples and then uh, hopefully tune in with y'all tonight at Led's party, the preppers party. I put stove pavers in the bottom of all my containers, making sure not to cover the holes. We have really high wind and they never move. Yeah, you can do that too. In the containers, you can you put a nice little stone paper to give it some extra weight. There you go. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Have a lovely weekend. Drop some seeds. If you're in my zone, you're primed to start, continue starting your cool season crops. We got, we got to about the mid part of this month. Get your cool season crops going. Get your carrots in the ground. Get your collars in the ground. Um, you can go ahead and pull the trigger on your beets. You'll be fine. They might take a while to come up, but go ahead and get those in the ground. Peas, get those in the ground. You should be starting all your warm season stuff inside right about now. Pretty much anything warm season, you can get away with starting right now, minus like beans and corn and squash. You're going to want to hold off on that, but I think you're good for watermelon right about now, but also check, check your calendars. That pretty much it. Y'all stay blessed. I will see you tonight, hopefully in the greenhouse lounge for the prepper party. Come over there and get some knowledge so you can prep, so you can stay ready and be ready all the time. All right, y'all stay blessed. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Let me get this thing. Nah, we didn't go inside. I can't stop. How to stop this thing? How do I stop it? <laughs> How do I stop it? It's been so long on the phone. Oh, there it is. Boom. All right. Now I found it. All right. Y'all are gone. <laughs> Peace. Good night. <laughs>